Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Martini Mondays. Now after Tony's spectacular tuxedo number two last week, I've had to really up my game. So this week we're going to make you my favourite daiquiri. Now this is a daiquiri that you might have had before, you can get it at Orsay restaurant just around the corner. And last week Tony and I went and had a strictly work escapade to Orsay to try out this drink and to persuade the bartender to give us the recipe, which she very kindly did. Mm -hmm. So the most important ingredient is rum, of course, in a daiquiri. And this particular type uses a Venezuelan rum, which is called Pampero Aniversario. And it even comes in a little handy leather travel case. You can get this at Total Wine at the town center. Then of course we have lime juice and also some simple syrup. And the simple syrup is made from this particular kind of turbinado sugar. Is there anything that you, special about that? Well, it's, it's raw sugar, so it's not processed and it's just gonna have a more robust and rich flavor. And when you make that, you just, on a, on a pot in the stove, just do equal parts sugar and water, boil it till the sugar dissolves and then let it cool. And you can get that at Fresh Market. So we've got the simple syrup, the rum, and some freshly squeezed lime juice. And that's key, freshly squeezed, not using, you know, the stuff in a bottle, or much worse, not, not a mix. So. so, martini shaker. And for each of the drinks, we're going to do two ounces of rum. As you can see, these have been quite popular since I bought this a few days ago. So two ounces of rum for each drink. One ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup. And then, because this is fruit juice, we're always going to shake. So I give it a really good shake for a long time. And then we're going to pour this into cocktail glasses. That's a great color. And then we garnish with a whole piece of lime. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mm. that's very good. So well good. Done. This is my favorite one so far. Yeah. Really recommend this one. Yeah, great job. And thanks to Orsay for letting us steal the recipe. Yes. So we've had uh, four of these so far, and we've had viewers begin to comment with things that they would like to hear us discuss, and we would love to encourage you all to continue to, to do so. Um, one of the things, that we've heard a lot about is um, questions about where we are in the concert master search. We've been in one for uh, some time now. A long time. And uh, one of them is, you know, what's the status of programming for the coming season? But let's let's begin with the uh, the concert master search. What's uh, where do things stand with that? So as you know, this has been going on for quite a long time, and it's really. I wish that we were we were closer to the end, but this is a really important thing. I think that this is probably the single most important decision that that I will make as music director when I'm here. And we have a wonderful committee of musicians from the orchestra um, who are taking it very seriously. Basically, we've had quite a number of candidates so far. We've had some come for longer trials, we've had some come for shorter periods. And although everybody that we've heard so far has been wonderful, we haven't reached a position yet where everybody has agreed or even come close to a majority of the committee agreeing um, on one person. Mm -hmm. So what the plan is now is to use next season to invite four more candidates, two of whom have already been with us. So there'll be four candidates next season, two coming back and two completely new people. Um, so we'll have four in total. Each of those candidates will come for two weeks. They'll play a Masterworks week and also a Pops week. That's one of the things that people don't realize that this job has to really have a very wide range of skills. People have got to be comfortable with classical repertoire and the Pops that we play. Um, and it's hard because we want somebody who's a first-rate violinist. We want somebody who can play a concerto with the orchestra as a soloist. Mm -hmm. We want somebody who has a kind of magic personality that smooths everything in rehearsal, that makes all the principles easy to cooperate, <laughs> they're always easy to cooperate with, but just makes everything easy in rehearsal. Um, we want somebody who has a musical point of view, we want somebody who knows about different styles of music, early music, classical music, um, late romantic music, modern music, and we want somebody who's going to be a leader for the orchestra who can 
target donor functions, who can go on visits, um, who can really be another face uh, for the orchestra. So it's a pretty big, big sell. And although we've come close, we just haven't quite found the right person yet. So we're going to hold on for another season, but we are all determined that we're going to make a decision next season yeah. because we have to, we have to get this going so that there's somebody sitting there. I'm really looking forward to having a right-hand man or woman um, who's like my sort of team captain on stage. Um, so I'm very eager to get that done as well. Can you speak a little bit more about the ways in which a concertmaster is a, a captain, not just sort of by their personality and the way that they, they uh, collaborate with the other principals, but just uh, from a, a in, in the way that they play, mm -hmm. what, how is a concertmaster actually a second in command on stage during a performance or a rehearsal? So when we're actually performing and playing in the moment, the concertmaster is the most important person, apart from the conductor, for the ensemble of the orchestra, for how the orchestra plays together. Everybody watches the concertmaster. All the string principals, all the wind brass principals watch for his or her physical movements so they know exactly where to play. You could say, doesn't the conductor do that? And yes, we do. But there's always a little bit of a delay between what I do and what actually happens, and that's just the way it is. Um, if the orchestra played right on what I did all the time, they'd almost be doing it before they saw what I was doing. So there's always this little fraction of a delay, and it's up to the concertmaster to make that really clear. So would you say the concertmaster is a little bit more demonstrative in their movements than uh, uh, a typical uh, section yes. violinist would be? on purpose, right. definitely. Yeah. Um, then there are all the things that come up in rehearsal, particularly for the strings like bowing. Um, the music that we have in front of us doesn't say which way the bow should go. So one of the concertmaster's big jobs, like all the string principles, is to, to decide what direction the bow goes in um, it, before we begin rehearsals. But then in rehearsal, the concertmaster will also be the kind of final word on what we're going to do. Like, he'll be the person who says, do it like this and then all the other principles will, will follow that. Yeah. Also from my point of view, um, and particularly for a conductor like me who is not a string player, I will often say something that's maybe not particularly technical, but it's quite poetic. So I might say I want it to sound airier. And in that case, the concertmaster will then sort of translate, if you like, into techno speak and tell the violinists, use this position, use this part of the bow, play on this part of the string. Um, so he's the person who really helps to translate um, poetry or metaphor or simile into something really specific. And um, that's something that I've, I'm really looking forward to having somebody um, to help more with that in rehearsal. So in one of our recent uh, uh, segments, we discussed the audition process. And the, the, the search for a concertmaster is a very enlarged, elongated version of the same thing. So mm -hmm. once we've heard everyone, there are parts of that process that are virtually identical to um, a more condensed audition process. So it could be, even, even once we do choose somebody, you and the committee chooses one of the candidates as the, the winner, there is still a period of um, tenure. trial, yeah. and tenure. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So. Um, Whereas a candidate who comes to play with the orchestra plays solo behind the screen, like we, we talked about last time, when the concertmaster comes, they have to play pretty much all the most difficult solos in the repertoire with the orchestra. So we add half an hour to the beginning of one of the rehearsals, and the, the candidate starts by playing the first half of the first movement of a famous concerto, so the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto or the Sibelius Concerto. Just imagine how nerve-wracking this is. Right. We've just met the orchestra haven't even met me, rehearsals haven't even begun, and the very first thing you do is play, accompanied by the orchestra. Right. Um, and then they play all the difficult solos, so bits from Heldenleben by Strauss, uh, Swan Lake, Brahms Wire, Scheherazade, Schumann, which Schumann is it, Schumann IV? Four. Um, really difficult things, and you have to do them right after each other, one after another. Yeah. Um, and that tells you a lot, you can hear a lot. Um, and then, of course, in the rest of the rehearsals, everybody's looking very carefully to see how the candidate manages their relationship with me, the relationship with the other string principals, and just there's this feeling of, does this fit? 
I think that's the most important thing when yeah. when we're so does this feel like we're all comfortable and we all are what's happening is what we expect to happen. That's very important. Particularly which, for me. Which will be unique to every orchestra, every ensemble. Yeah. In a, in a sense. Like is the way the concertmaster interprets what I'm doing what I expect to hear. And also really important, how does the first violin section sound as a whole? Because the first violin section are copying everything that the, that the concertmaster does in the most minute detail. And when some candidates came through, the best ones made the whole first violin section sound like one single glowing instrument. And that's when you can tell that the violinists in his section or her section really respect the concertmaster. And that's one of the most important things. Yeah. Uh, and then in addition to these uh, solo excerpts from uh, the orchestral repertoire, they have to play a concerto, yep. a, a movement of a concerto. And then there is an excerpt where they play with just a string quartet. That's right. Yep. And then there's an interview yep. process. Mm -hmm. And they have to go out to dinner with some donors. I mean, <laughs> we, they really go through the whole gamut and just a span of a week. That's right. So it's quite an intense week for them. Yeah, indeed. Anyway, fingers crossed that it's wrapped up as soon as possible. Right. We, we would maybe be even further along in the process had um, COVID not come along and started to push back uh, part of this past season. So. We'd be finished. Yeah. We, because we had two of those candidates already booked Right. for that period. Right. Yeah. Yet, yet another uh, victim so far. But looking forward to wrapping this up next season. Oh my goodness. And speaking of next season, um, Thunder we're, and Lightning. Oh yeah, we're, not, uh, we're not quite ready to um, announce everything for next season, but um, what, where, do, where does everything stand at this point? Well, at the moment, we are still opening at the end of September. The season is still going ahead mm -hmm. as planned. We've made some adjustments, um, and we'll be able to tell you about those probably on the next time that we're here. Yeah. Um, adjustments so that we can cooperate with social distancing guidelines on stage and off stage, and obviously that's meant that we've had to make some adjustments. Um, but we can tell you a lot more about that next time. Yeah. Well, thank you. This was another great catch up, and thank you for the great daiquiri, and looking forward to our next chat. Yeah, me too. All See right. you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.